We're at Connections 2019 with our friend Matt Polka. Matt, you were on a panel yesterday. It sounds like it was a very engaging panel with Tom. Why don't you tell us some of your highlights from that? Sure. Tom Cohen with Kelly Dry, counsel for ACA Connects and Mike Romano from NTCA. This is the second year that we've done this, uh, sort of a regulatory update. So we covered the landscape here. We started on funding, whether it's the USDA's Reconnect program, uh, the FCC's uh, Rural Development Opportunities Fund, then we shifted. We talked about broadband barriers, barriers to deployment, cable franchising, and then of course we had to come back and talk about video and retransmission consent. So oh, well, it was late that. in the day from four to five and people were definitely ready for a beer afterwards. Well, I'm sure that one of the topics too is 5G plus plan. 5G plus, which really focuses on using C-band spectrum potentially for 5G broadband, but then if that spectrum is used, how it can be used effectively through a public auction that would allow some funds to be able to be put back into development and deployment of more rural fiber. Uh, th this is a comprehensive plan that we at ACA Connects along with the Competitive Carriers Association and Charter have put forth that basically said 5G is, is, is terrific. We know that people are using it. It's, it's going to be great for technology. It's going to be a competitive broadband service. And if you're going to use the C-band spectrum, that's fine. But there will be an impact on video providers because they receive video signals today via C-band. So how can we figure out how, how best to, to manage this? Our plan is a public auction that would, uh, that would auction uh, 337 megahertz of the 500 megahertz C-band uh, for 5G, but would allow through that public auction about $7 billion of what's expected to be 40 to $50 billion to be used for fiber deployment throughout our country and in rural America to transition from video delivery via C-band to terrestrial delivery via fiber. That does two things. Number one, first it, 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 it really m moves the transition to terrestrial delivery which is already happening between cable providers and, and content providers. But it also gets more fiber out into, into our country, particularly rural areas where greater backbone and networks are needed. So we expect uh, at least 120,000 root miles of fiber could be built. Over time, we, we could see the creation of 100,000 jobs that would help to de deliver this and really get more fiber to rural America. So we think it's a win-win-win for all parties involved, and we hope that the FCC adopts our 5G Plus plan. Well, and an important point about that, that spectrum right now it's public spectrum, but the public really isn't receiving money for the use of that, right? Potentially. Yeah. Uh, the, the opposing plan is a plan that's been promoted by something called the C-Band Alliance, which basically are, are the big satellite companies that own the satellites in the sky, Intelsat, SES, etc. So, so they originally won the spectrum to use for, for, for this delivery of C-Band signals. And now they're saying, well, we'll just we'll just auction it privately and we'll pocket the funds and uh, you cable operators if you have any trouble or interference trust us we'll, we'll give you a filter or something like that to fix it and the truth is is that won't work plus there won't be any benefits to rural America there won't be any job creation there won't be any transition to terrestrial delivery so we have basically said private auctions not the way to go and in fact it may be illegal there may be no legal precedent to allow for a private auction by private entities of spectrum that they were given by the government uh, so we're opposing the C-Band uh, Alliance plan, and we think our plan's better. Uh, in fact, uh, our SVP of Government Affairs, Ross Lieberman, today on October 29th is testifying in front of, in front of Congress to, to say why the 5G Plus plan's better. Democrats in Congress favor a public auction, so we hope that as we create the groundswell that we, we can ultimately see a public auction approved by the FCC. And while we're on the topic of free spectrum, what about retransmission consent? <laughs> yeah, free spectrum, free over-the-air <laughs> broadcasting from your local, you know, your local broadcast station. Worse than ever, uh, here we are in 2019, most blackouts by broadcasters ever in 2019 than any previous year. Uh, broadcasters have already collected uh, more than $11 billion they've extracted from consumers for, for what a consumer can receive free over the air, literally, if they have an antenna. The, the problem keeps getting worse while, the, while the, the, the pot shrinks because of cord cutting over the top, et cetera. So, so broadcasters have fewer subscribers over which to monetize this incredible amount of money that they're seeking. Uh, at the same time, their network uh, owners basically 
uh, where they affiliate are saying you need to pay us more in reverse compensation. So there's increasing pressure on broadcasters, which means they push that pressure to the cable operator and the customer. So we're, we're fighting back against it. We're showing the, the harm to competition, the harm to consumers, the fact that these outdated regulations are really just beyond the pale now. Something has to be done. We, we are very, very hopeful this year that Congress will reauthorize the, the Stellar Satellite Home Viewer Bill, which will extend the good faith rules, maybe even apply them to buying groups like our buying group at the National Cable Television Cooperative, which would help to, to balance a little bit uh, of the retrans negotiations. But ultimately, these, these laws and regulations need to be fixed because uh, they're old, they're outdated, they're clearly uh, harming consumers who are paying more for free TV. Uh, and now, the brunt of that seems to be following, following more on those that aren't going to be adopting over the top, like the elderly. Mm -hmm. So they're paying, you know, they're paying the freight for their local broadcast station, which is no longer local because they're part of a major group or you know, owned by a network. So it's, it's out of hand. We're, we're, we're glad to be able to work with people like Anna Eshoo, Steve Scalise, who are leading the charge on a bipartisan basis, and we just have to get this over the goal line. Yeah, and you're referring to their Modern, modern Television Act. How is that moving through Congress? Well, the, the, the Modern Television Act of 2019 introduced by uh, Congressman Scalise and, and Congresswoman Eshoo is a great stake in the ground because here are two entirely diametrically opposed people from a political perspective, Anna Eshoo from Silicon Valley, Steve Scalise from rural Louisiana, who've come together and really fought together over the last 10 years for retransmission consent reform. And now as senior members of the Energy and Commerce Committee, they've put a stake in the ground that says this has to change. So their bill uh, on a bipartisan basis would provide for a, a standstill in negotiations so that you couldn't have a blackout in, in front of a marquee event like a Super Bowl or March Madness. It would, it would give the FCC the ability to impose uh, arbitration uh, and it would provide some other beneficial uh, effects to what is now a take it or leave it deal that's just forced on cable operators and consumers by broadcasters. So we hope that because of their influence as leaders that they'll be able to move the committee drafts to have uh, significant portions of their bill included in both the House and the Senate bill, which ultimately can be passed by the end of the year. But time's running out. There's not a whole lot of time left, so we're pushing and hopefully we'll see something happen quickly. Oh, that'd be wonderful. And what's nice about it is it's a bipartisan effort. And and you're always, uh, the summit is always very good about, you know, creating bipartisan atmosphere. Why don't you tell us about the future? We look for, for opportunities to work with people. I mean, we, we don't think bipartisanship is dead, even though it's, it, it's had its days. It's had better days. But uh, the scalise issue bill is a good example of, of, of what we try to do in working with members to find solutions. And, and certainly as we bring our members back to Washington, March 17, 18, and 19 uh, in 2020 for our, our Summit 2020, uh, which we call Focus on the Future. Get it, the 2020, sort of the I focus on the future. There you go. Okay, no, thanks. Okay, Matt, so yeah. the, there you go. So you have the glasses, I, I don't. Got, yeah. I got the glasses, right. 2020 visions, focus on the future. Uh, but we do try to focus on bipartisanship, where we bring our members to Washington to say, look, I, I don't care where you're from. There are problems that affect our unique markets in small towns, rural areas, our customers broadband, video issue, I mean all of the things we just talked about. These are issues that need to be solved and we're looking for people to work with us to solve them. We're committed to work with you, we want your commit commitment to work back with us. So we're looking forward to it uh, and I know it's going to be another great summit and we'll be back again in March and hopefully the once again we'll, we'll keep the snow away. <laughs> Excellent. Well, Matt, always great Thanks catching again. up with you. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks.